हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री बाय डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे ऑनवर्ड्स आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन वेयर वी विल टॉक अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन सो रफली अल्टरनेट डे और मीन्स इन टू वीडियो ऑन ए वीक आई विल अपलोड इट सो टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द क्रोमेटोग्राफी वेयर वी विल सी द डिफिनेशन ऑफ क्रोमेटोग्राफी सो दिस इज द बेसिक्स ऑफ क्रोमेटोग्राफी वी आर गोइंग टू सी बेसिक प्रिंसिपल वी विल सी हाउ इट वर्क्स एंड वर्ड डिफरेंट टाइप्स and their applications we are not going to talk today any specific type of chromatography in details today uh, later on we will have different video on that one uh, so th there uh, today we, we will see the definition basic definition of chromatography what is the main principle on which uh, pro principle it works what are the different types of uh, chromatography and what is its basic application in different fields we are going to use it so if you will see the basic uh, definition of chromatography what is chromatography is it is a separation technique it is an analytical techniques uh, biophysical techniques you can call it which normally help us in this separation identification and purification of the compounds uh, from a mixture of uh, for their qualitative as well as quantitative analysis uh, so it is an analytical techniques commonly normally we are going to use for the separation uh, of a mixture of chemical substances into the individual components so that the individual components can be thoroughly analyzed uh further there are different types of chromatography uh, later on we will talk about that one like liquid gas ion exchange affinity and other things uh so this chromatography uh, the term uh, which uh, chromatography term was first time it was used by russian botanist uh, mikhail uh, trest in 19, 1996 and then the first analytical use of chromatography was described by james and martin 1952 for the usage of gas chromatography for the analysis of fatty acid mixture uh after that one a wide range of chromatographical procedures makes use for different on, um, on the basis of different criteria different characteristic features like uh, depending on the size depending on binding affinity charges and other uh, physical and chemical properties of the separating materials we have different types of chromatography just now i have used i have given you some of the terms like gas liquid ion exchange affinity so these are different um, based on different principle different specific procedures this chromatography it is a powerful separation tools and that are used in almost all the branches of science and it often is the uh, only means of separating components uh, from complex mixture so overall if you see chromatography it is a separation techniques that every organic chemist and biochemist is familiar with uh, what is uh, exactly if we we'll say uh, in this one uh, so let me first explain that uh, uh, we are having uh, three different component uh, two reactant that is a and b are the reactant and uh, when these two reacts it is going to give you a third kind of product that is c so reactants are a and b and the product what we are going to get uh, after the reaction of a and b that is c now uh, so when we are going to uh, this is one so we will have three different components unreacted a uh, in the reaction mixture we will have unreacted a unreacted b and the desired product that is c now i want to separate them uh, all together means so we want to separate a separate b and separate c so uh, first we are having two uh, different type of chromatography we can use it first uh, as shown in the left uh, this side uh, that uh, TLC that is thin layer chromatography run, uh, plate has been used so this is basically a rectangular piece of glass plate uh, coated with the thin layer of silica and a spot has been used at the this point at the origin so there a reaction mixture uh, which is a mixture of a b and c has been uh, used there just above the base of the plate uh, denoted with the solid line and the placed uh, the plate in a jar that containing the appropriate solvent uh, in this case uh, we are going to use a mixture of 1 is to 1 um, volume uh, mixture volume by volume mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate now uh, so that that much volume we are going to use so that it this uh, origin will not be deep in that one so below the origin we are going to uh, use the solvent now slowly this uh, solvent uh, start rising up to the silica plate uh, through the uh, means uh, because of the capillary actions and slowly all the three uh, spots you can it will be visible so three uh, spots like as you are going to see in the picture a b and c has been distinctly visualized uh, depending on their movement next if you will see uh, in this case uh, 
in order to actually perform the separation uh, you can use gas uh, sorry glass column also as shown in the right hand side on the picture a glass column will be used uh, with a stop cock attached at the bottom uh, inserted a cotton plug at the bottom of the co column and pack uh, the column with the uh, silica gel uh, which is normally prepared in the organic solvent once the column was packed and the solvent mixture above the bed uh, reached to the less than 5 mm, uh, mm then we are going to use our component means a mixture of the organic uh, components slowly uh, the components depending on their movement uh, a and b will be slowly move bo towards bottom of the uh, column and it will be separated so like you can see in this uh, separation so first uh, elution will be for b then uh, a will be eluted and then c will be eluted depending on the movement now this is the basically how we are going to this is how chromatography works now before going to see the detailed chromatography we there are some uh, specific terms which we should understand because i have used here also like elutions elutant and eluate uh, mobile phase stationary phase carrier so these are the different terms in this when we are going to uh, use this uh, chromatography there are some uh, specific terms we are going to use it so as you are going to see here we are going to use different terms like first is called as mobile phase or the carrier so it is the solvent which is moving through the column just you can see you have seen in the previous phase also like here we are going to use organic solvent this is the mobile phase or here whatever the solvent we have used uh, in the base for dipping this uh, silica gel that is called as mobile phase so mobile phase we are having which is no solvent moving through the column or through the uh, plate then we are having a stationary phase or absorbent so like in this uh, column we had silica gel and there also on the plate also we had silica gel that is substance that stay fixed that is not going to move inside the column that is called as a stationary phase eluent is the called as fluid entering into the column uh, eluate is the called as uh, fluid that is exiting from the column that is collected at, uh, at the bottom like here uh, from this uh, a stop cock it will be uh, collected that is called as eluate and elution is the process of washing out a column through the a, a column using the suitable solvent and analyte is the mixture uh, which we are going to analyze which we are going to separate it so these are the different terms we will use further during our uh, study also now if you see the basically principle uh, we are going to start from this one so this is the starting point in our case as depicted here uh, the analyte is loaded over the silica bed so in this case we are having column packed with the silica gel that is called as stationary phase and here we are going to use analyte is loaded into this one so analyte loaded onto the column <coughs> packed in the column and allowed to adhere to the silica here silica acts as a stationary phase and solvent we are going to use that is that is going to be used as a mobile phase uh, is then made to the flow through the silica bed so as we are going to use this mobile phase or solvent so as solvent is moving out uh, depending on the solubility depending on the mobility uh, these analyte different components of the analytes also starts moving along with the solvent or the mobile phase okay and components of the analyte start separating out as a distinct bands so slowly as these bands is they are going to be separated out and slowly in that same fashion it is going to ooze out uh, solvent uh, slowly it is coming out so different bands will be collected into different flasks so every component yeah every different fragment yeah fractions will be separated into different tubes so by which uh, this is the normal principle of the chromatography how they works now uh, uh, before moving further uh, we are going to see the one of the experiment uh, for the separation of different kind of uh, uh, chlorophyll component yeah plant components so what we are going to do uh, take a few leaves and crush them uh, in a mortar like we are going to do it here then spot a drop of the leaf extract on a strip of chromatography plate that is roughly 0.5 mm cm above the edge of the paper so this chromatographic plate uh, where we have put a drop or a spot of the leaf extract is made of cellulose and is quite polar in the nature so we are going to dip into the propane that is the mobile phase now uh, after the placing of the strip uh, of paper in a jar that contains the small volume of propanone that is acetone 
this is called as mobile phone there should be just enough propane so that the edge of the paper dip into the comfortably place the lid on the jar to avoid any kind of evaporation of this solvent so lid will be closed out now let us solvent rise up in the paper uh, by the capillary actions uh, after that one you are going to remove the paper strip from the jar and once the solvent has reached to the solvent front on this one uh, last point and then we are going to visualize it so there you can see different fragments of the chloroform or different kind of color components like anthocyanin chlorophyll b a carotenoids anthophils carotenoids they are going to be separated depending on their movement so uh, this is how it works now how what is the exact principle of this separation of these components so if you will see uh, differ, uh, differential affinities uh, we can call it what, what terms we are going to use the differential affinity that is the strength of adhesion of the different components of the analytes whatever mixture we want separate so in that uh, different components will be there and uh, all every component will have different strength of adhesions of the various component of the analytes towards the stationary or mobile phase results in the differential separation of the components if you we'll say uh, affinity in terms is dictated by a specific property that is called as adsorption and solubility we will see what so adsorption find as the property of how will a component of a mixture stick to the stationary phase so adsorption is the association of your component of analytes uh, with the stationary phase and solubility is the property of how will a component of mixture dissolve in the mobile phase so remember if your component uh, higher the adsorption because adsorption means the association with the accessory phase if your compound will have high adsorption rate so it will uh, associate with the accessory phase very tightly so compound will move very slowly and that will be near to the origin so slower will the movement and move uh, into the column and if higher is the solubility in the mobile phase then faster will be the movement because it will be moving along with the mobile phase so these two points you need to remember if high absorption adsorption will be there because adsorption is the association with the stationary phase then slow movement will be there if higher is the solubility uh, which is the association with the solubility in the mobile phase then faster movement will be there so uh, the interplay between the above two factors solubility uh, adsorption and solubility determines the differential rate at which the different components of the analytes will move through the column now adsorption and solubility of a molecule can be manipulated by using uh, different kind of uh, uh, stationary phase or different kind of different types of mobile phase you can use it so you can manipulate you can change the adsorption and solubility uh, that we are going to use further in different processes suppose uh, we have a mixture of two molecules like a and b uh, which you can see here we are having a mixture of a and b uh, where a is a protein and b is a lipid as you can see here b is a lipid and a is a protein uh, a protein which is a polar and b is lipid which is normally non polar now uh, our column is packed with silica which is a polar in nature our mobile phase is hexane uh, which is non polar in nature so mobile phase mobile phase is uh, yeah, mobile phase which we are going to use silica is polar in nature because our uh, component which we want compound b that is non polar so this non polar will be easily miscible or easily soluble in the non polar mobile phase so uh, lipid will be dissolved in this one or it will be easily soluble in this one and so they will separate very easily so they will elute first which is not point and similarly uh, when we are going to use different component like aceto nitrile which is a polar solvent so in this polar solvent polar protein will be dissolved easily and non polar lipid will not dissolve here so when you are having a mixture of a plus b in this one so a is a protein uh, which is polar in nature so this polar will dissolve with this polar and it will elute very fast and this is non polar so this non polar will not dissolve here so they will have a association with the silica so that is how it is going to work in the separation now we are going to see the different types of chromatography uh, when we are going to talk about throughout this uh, study we will say uh, there are two major specific types of uh, chromatography we are going to use we can call it normal phase chromatography and second we are going to call 
रिवर्स फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी इन द नॉर्मल फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी वेयर आर एसेसनरी फेज इज पोलर सो एज यू आर गोइंग टू सी वेयर आर एसेसनरी फेज इज पोलर इन नेचर दैट इज हाइड्रोफिलिक इन नेचर एंड आर मोबाइल फेज इज नॉन पोलर सो रिमेम्बर दिस इज कॉल एज नॉर्मल क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी या नॉर्मल फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी वेयर स्टेशनरी फेज इज पोलर दैट इज हाइड्रोफिलिक एंड मोबाइल फेज इज नॉन पोलर दैट इज हाइड्रोफोबिक वेन वी आर गोइंग टू यूज अ रिवर्स टाइप लाइक स्टेशनरी फेज विल बी नॉन पोलर एंड दैट इज हाइड्रोफोबिक एंड मोबाइल फेज इज पोलर विच इज हाइड्रोफिलिक इन नेचर दैट इज कॉल एज रिवर्स फेज ऑफ क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी रिवर्स फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी सो मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस वी आर गोइंग टू यूज नॉर्मल फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी वेयर स्टेशनरी फेज पोलर एंड मोबाइल फेज नॉन पोलर रिवर्स थिंग विल बी कॉल एज रिवर्स फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी इन दिस केस इन द केस ऑफ नॉर्मल फेज क्रोमेट्रोग्राफी द कंपाउंड इल्यूटेड फर्स्ट बिकॉज मोबाइल फेज इज नॉन पोलर सो नॉन पोलर कंपाउंड विल बी नॉन पोलर कंपोनेंट विल बी इजिली सोल्यूबल हेयर सो नॉन पोलर थिंग्स विल इल्यूट फर्स्ट बिकॉज अलॉन्ग विद दिस मोबाइल फेज नॉन पोलर कंपाउंड विल बी इल्यूटेड फर्स्ट and polar compound polar things will be eluted last because they are not easily soluble in the mobile phase so compound eluted last is polar a stationary phase commonly we are going to use here is silica gel and this type of normal phase chromatography we are going to frequently use in the column chromatography and thin layer chromatography tlc reverse phase we are going to have because it is polar mobile phase is polar so polar compound will be soluble here and along with mobile phase uh, pol, uh, mobile polar mobile phase polar compound will be eluted first and non polar compound will be eluted in the last here some of the stationary phases are c18 and c8 bonded phase and commonly this is going to be used in uh, hplc Th this is depending on which type of solvent we are going to which type of stationary phase and which type of mobile phase we are going to use we have two category of chromatography normal phase chromatography and reverse phase chromatography other than that one so these are the common stationary phase and mobile phase in the both normal phase and reverse phase you can see it in normal phase stationary phase commonly we are going to use it uh, silica uh, most commonly we are going to use where siloxane or amino bonded siloxane cryopropyne bonded with siloxane uh, diol bonded siloxane so more commonly it is silica i think components things will be there and these are non polar components uh, which is organic solvents commonly we are going to use as a mobile phase in the reverse reverse phase we are going to use here non polar components and these are the polar things we are going to use it reverse phase so these are some of the example of stationary and mobile phase used in normal and reverse phase chromatography then we are going to see the uh, different other types of uh, chromatography substances can be separated on the basis of the different ca characteristic different criteria like we have i have told you these characteristic on the basis of which we are going to separate which we are going to use in the chromatography are their size their shape total charge hydrophobic groups present on the surface and the binding capacity with the stationary phase this normally leads uh, different types of chromatographic techniques each with their own instrumentation and the working principle will be there for example four different separation techniques based on the molecular characteristic and interaction types are ion exchange surface absorption partition and ion illusion and other chromatography uh, which is based on the stationary beds uh, beds including column thin and paper chromatography total we are having 11 types of chromatographic uh, basically that are uh, different all of other types like column column chromatography ion exchange chromatography gel permeation uh, molecular sieve chromatography affinity chromatography paper chromatography thin layer chromatography and then we are having gas chromatography dyed uh, ligand chromatography hydrophobic interaction chromatography uh, pseudo affinity chromatography and HPLC high pressure liquid chromatography these are the 11 different types of chromatography we are having separately we will talk uh, different uh, one by one now we are going to categorize on different criteria so the classification of chromatography based on the chromatographic uh, bed shape so there we are having two major types that is column and the planar chromatography in the case of column chromatography this is a type of chromatography the stationary phase of the setup is Uh, placed in a tubes or the column uh, then the particle of the stationary phase which is the solid state are made to fill the inside the tube and a unrestricted open path is then prepared for the mobile phase somewhere along with the middle of the tube 
in the case of planar chromatography uh, this type of chromatography the stationary phase uh, or the apparatus used as a planar shape and different sub categories of planar chromatography includes paper chromatography or tlc thin layer chromatography in the case of paper chromatography we are going to use a specific a special type of paper as a stationary phase and in case of thin layer chromatography normally we are going to use a glass plate where we are going to make a silica gel then we are having a classification of chromatography based on the physical state of the mobile phase there we are having two major types of chromatography that is gas chromatography and liquid chromatography in the case of gas chromatography this is a type of chromatography the mobile phase of a substance uh, is exist in the gaseous state then uh, this can be noted that the gas chromatography is also known as gas liquid chromatography or in abbreviation we are going to call glc this type of chromatography almost always involve uh, the usage of the packed column in the case of liquid chromatography the mobile phase is exist in the liquid state and the liquid chromatography commonly we are going to call lc and it is called carried out either on a plane or in a column this can be noted that the, uh, there exist many sub categories under liquid chromatography such as hplc high performance liquid chromatography or reverse phase liquid chromatography uh, rplc then we are having three different category depending on the mechanism of the separation uh, that is ion exchange chromatography size exclusion chromatography and expanded bed adsorption chromatography in the case of ion exchange chromatography this is the chromatography which is also known as ion chromatography here uh, ion exchange chromatography involves the separation of the components uh, of the mixture via an ion exchange mechanism so here uh, if you see uh, in the case of ion exchange chromatography the so stationary stationary phase is uh, solid uh, cationic or anionic resins and the mobile phase is normally it is liquid and the basis of separation is ionic charge of the molecules and molecules normally possessing the opposite charge of the resin will bind tightly to the resin and molecules having the same charges as the resins will flow through the column due to uh, repulsion and elute the first so different charges component of the mixture are separated with the help of different ions in case of size exclusion chromatography uh, the stationary phase is a solid that is the micro porous uh, beds of the silica uh, this type of chromatography involves the separation of different components of the mixture basis, uh, based on their sizes as its name suggests and the mobile phase is liquid and the size exclusion chromatography components of the mixture are filtered based on their hydrophobic volume and hydrodynamic diameters the so main it is as its name suggests it is the uh, basis of the separation is the size of the molecules so a small molecules uh, get trapped in the pores of the stationary phase while the large molecules flow, th flow through the gaps between the be uh, beads and have very uh, small retention times so the large molecules are normally uh, going to uh, comes out first in this type of chromatography there uh, is not any interaction physically or chemical between the analytes and the stationary phase so just simply they are going to be separated on the basis of their size so a small size will be get trapped and they will come out uh, eluted lastly and the large size does not get uh, trapped and they are coming out in the first then we are having expanded uh, bed adsorption chromatography this type of chromatography is commonly used in the biochemical separation process this is a, it, uh, it is a separation techniques used uh, which is uh, used for the capturing of proteins from the mixture samples now if we we'll see the application of chromatography and uh, details about these chromatography uh, whatever the gas chromatography or the different things we will uh, one by one we will talk slowly we will have a separate video on each on on every chromatographic techniques now if we we'll see the application of these chromatography where we are going to use uh, these chromatography usage so they are used in the different sectors like for in the, if you will see the in the pharmaceutical sectors uh, they are going to be used to identify and analyze uh, si uh, samples for the uh, presence of the trace element of the chemicals separation of compound based on their molecular weight and elemental compo compositions it also used for the detection uh, detecting the unknown compounds and the purity of mixtures and it is also going to be used in the drug development in the case of chemical industry it is used for the testing water sample and also checks air quality uh, 
HPLC and GC gas chromatography are very much used in the detection of various contaminants such as the uh, different kind of pesticides and oils uh, in various life sciences applications also they are going to be used. Other than this one, if you see it, they are also going to be used in the food industry, uh, in food spoilage and additive detections. They are also used uh, for the determining the nutritional quality of the food. In the case of forensic science, uh, for the pathological and crime scene testing like analyze blood and uh, hair samples for the crime places. Uh, molecular biology studies, various uh, hyphenated techniques in chromatography such as EC, LC, MS are applied in the study of the metabolomics, uh, different metabolites, primary metabolites, secondary metabolites or different other biochemical components and proteomics along with the nucleic acid research and HPLC is used in protein separations like insulin purification, different protein separations, plasma fragmentations, enzyme purifications, also in different departments like uh, fuel industry, biotechnology, biochemical process. Other than that one, they are also going to be used in number of other processes like when we are going to uh, use phytoconstituent analysis, different drug solvent, uh, drug analysis, drug metabolites analysis, separation of different phytoconstituents and the phytochemicals. So for all these processes, we are going to use uh, the usage of chromatography. So this was the different types of chromatographic, uh, their uh, uh, main principle types and uh, how it works. What are the different uh, category of chromatography? So this is all about for today. Uh, if you like the video, there's the like button. If you have not subscribed my channel, you can subscribe it. You can follow me on the various, various social networking site. If you have any query, any comments in the comment box, you can write in the comment box. Uh, thank you very much. Have a nice day.